How you doing folks? The time is upon us for me to learn how to weld sheet metal. Now, I'm going to do it with what I have, rather than going out and buying a whole load of new stuff. So that means doing it, doing it with a gasless MIG welder. Now I can stick big lumps of pig iron together by just turning the settings up on the welder and just giving it a blast. But uh, that's not exactly the scientific method and it's certainly not going to be good enough for my MG, which is the reason why I need, need to learn how to weld. That and the fact that I don't really have much faith or trust in bodywork experts at the moment, not with my previous experience of them. So there's a multitude of reasons why I'm trying to do this. Uh, trying to do the body work on the MG myself and that's just one of them. The other reason is because I want to and I want to figure out how to do it myself. So what I have here is at the removed front wing from the MG. Now I know some of you who have been following my channel may have seen me fairly hacking this off and you can see damage was done around here uh, that kind of area there but fear not folks because I have another wing that was donated with the car, so that's the one I'm actually going to be using. I'm not going to be using the purple one. This one's actually in much better condition to begin with. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the purple one over there just to uh, practice on and actually uh, figure it out and learn how to do it myself. So um, the, the bits I'll be cutting out will be kind of, you know, I'll, I'll just make up areas that are uh, kind of uh, in need of patching or whatever. And then we can maybe try and actually tackle some of the actually rusty areas and stuff like that. So it's a case of kind of forming things and getting them into shape and all that sort of stuff. I've been spending a bit of time uh, watching YouTube videos on how to do this myself. And um, actually one of the, the very useful series I watched was by Lakeside Auto Body. So thanks for those guys. They're uh, very, very helpful. Um, so, well... At least I hope they are anyway. We'll find out when I, <laughs> if I can figure this out myself. So, uh, yeah. So, what I'm going to do first of all is, before I do anything else, is I'm going to actually pretend that I'm grinding off a section that's, uh, that's rusty. Okay. So, uh, let's, uh, let's have a look at the piece here. So, there is uh, the, top of the, uh, the top of the wing. Okay. It's a real shame that I can't... Well, I could reuse it technically, but it would just be a bit counterintuitive. I'd use the better of the two. The car's going to have to be painted anyway. So, um, yeah, I'm going to maybe make a, a square about, say, four inches uh, across. And yes, I'm using a curved piece because uh, I may as well throw myself a little bit in the deep end there. So what we're going to do is we're going to line that out. We're going to actually mark that out. And um, I'm going to, uh, well, before I mark it out, I'm going to actually grind the paint back. And once the paint is ground back, then I'm going to go around it with a scriber. And I'm going to mark out the square that needs to be removed. I don't actually have a scriber. I'm going to use a pick. I, I have a scriber somewhere. God knows where the hell it is. You don't know what's in the paint. So don't breathe it in, okay? If you have a Draco mask, use it, all right? If not, use a dust mask. I'm sure there's plenty of them going around. So I'm going to use the Draco mask and I have a pair of cutproof gloves on and I have my goggles. So if you're not going to take safety seriously when doing this, then don't do it, folks, because it is dangerous. OK, so everything's marked out now. So uh, next thing to do is I'm going to actually cut that piece out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a template to, ma to make a new piece to fill that in, because this is going to be a butt weld repair that we're doing, not a uh, lap weld. So the butt weld basically is flush. So um, well, in theory, that's what's going to be after. In in practice, it's probably going to be a complete pig's ear, but we'll give it a go anyway. So um, yeah. So theoretically, that's the. Um, that's the rusty bit of metal that's been cut out okay so it's um in actual fact i'll be keeping it for it to make a patch for something else if needs be so uh yeah uh, for the moment anyway that's uh, that's step one done the next thing we need to do is we need to dress the edges of the hole by the way i know this may be coming across as a bit of a how-to video or me trying to do a how-to video on something i don't know how to do but it's not it's actually me talking aloud to try and figure it out as i go along myself so <laughs> Um, that's uh, <coughs> when I say to you that this is what I'm doing, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right way of doing it. So, 
let's uh let's get your cells lined up here and you can have a look and what we'll do is we'll just get a hand file and the important thing here is to not uh thin out the uh not to thin out the metal by going at it with the grinder it's gonna be deeper with a hand file that's not going to thin it out Another character on YouTube I've been uh, learning from is Urchfab. I couldn't think of his name earlier on, that's why I didn't mention it earlier. But uh, between him and Lakeside Autobody, I've kind of, um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to sort of get get to grips with it. So um, yeah, I'm going to show you the method Urchfab showed me to um, make a template. Okay, so we're going to start off with a piece of cardboard. So just make sure you get an adult supervision before using the scissors, folks, okay? And I'm going to get my big meat fists. I'm going to just press along the seam through the cardboard. All right, do it right the way around. A couple of passes. Okay, now you'll see that there is a an indent on the cardboard. It's not very clear because there's marks on how to change a timing belt on the inside of this. So once again, we're getting all blue Peter and we're going to just cut out that template, making sure that you have your tongue at the right angle at all times. All right, so there's our, there's our cardboard template. So now let's just offer that up to the hole and see how it fits. All right, so that will fit in there. That's a nice fit there now, so that, that'll be grand. It, it, it's, it's sitting up a little bit on one side because I haven't put the bend in it, but um, when it comes to that, we will be doing that. So now the next thing to do is to drop it on the floor. Now the next thing to do is to cut it out. So we will uh, take it from a different part of the wing that doesn't have the curve in it. Same process, basically. Grind the paint off, make the mark. You're gonna scribe around that, and then we're going to uh, cut that out with the grinder. <laughs> All right, so there's the uh, there's the newly cut out piece, which you will notice is flatter than the other one, which is going to cause a little bit of a problem, but that's a, a problem that we need to learn to overcome, which is what I'm trying to achieve here. So what we're going to do is we're going to offer that up into the hole and see how we get on. I'm aware it does need to be deburred, but it's not far off the mark there at that anyway. So by the time I've put a little bit of a bend in that, you, you may as well get the bend right before you try and uh, take any extra material off it, because otherwise what will end up happening is you'll find yourself a little bit short. But uh, that's not bad now, that. that. Um, so let's, uh, let's see if we can uh, just dress that up a little bit and then we'll see if we can bend it. could just use the bench grinder. Okay, you're not trying to make a razor blade out of this, okay? So it's very important that you don't make it too thin, all right? Because what'll end up happening as soon as you go and try and weld it, you'll end up just blowing a hole in it. So uh, it needs to kind of be butt-ended. And in fairness, it doesn't need to be perfectly deburred either, you know? I mean, uh, just good enough is good enough. So, uh, yeah, next thing we're going to do is going to try and put put a little bit of a curve in this and get the shape right. All right, so you can actually bend this with your fingers. It's only uh, it's only 20 gauge steel, like, you know, I mean, it's not going to it's not going to be too, too hard to bend. So I'm just using my thumbs just to put a little bit of a profile in. And then what we'll do is we'll we'll get it right when we actually have it fitted into the uh, into the piece of metal. I'm trying not to kink it as well. That's the other thing. So. Let's, have, let's just offer that up and see how it looks. Okay, so what I have on the bottom of this here is actually a magnet. So the uh, magnet will ha will serve two functions. One is it will allow me to get everything fairly squared away here. And two is it will let me, um, it, it'll dissipate some of the heat when it comes to welding. So I need to remove a little bit of material along there now just to get it to actually sit down. So. That's not a major ordeal, but we'll do it on we'll do it with a hand file just to make sure we don't go too mad on it. 
the cut proof gloves are a great uh, a great addition in fairness at least i'm not going to cut my hands to ribbons while i'm doing this so now let's see how this fits now what we can do is we can now weld at any of the points where it is flush with the bodywork or flush with the panel so which is going to be easier said than done to be fair but uh i need to remove a little bit more material well let's just see if i can put if i put more of a bend in it will it be right no i need to I need to just take a little bit off that i'll uh, i'll come back to you when i have it done Okay, so perfect it is not, but at this point, at this moment in time, it doesn't need to be perfect. What it needs to do is fill a hole, and then what we can do is we can use a um, we can use the the hammer and dolly to kind of straighten everything out after the fact. So um, what we're looking for now is we're looking for a few points where I can kind of tack it. So um, you're looking for somewhere where it's level. Uh, you know where it's flat between the two pieces you don't want to have it so it's, it's raised up on one side because then what you, what's going to happen is when you're grinding off the welds you're going to be grinding down some of the metal as well and that just won't do so um yeah i mean literally you're, you're going to be looking for kind of like three or four places at this point moment in time so um yeah let's uh let's get the welder set up this for those of you who don't realize is my welding plant it is a clark mini mig 130 en and uh it served me well in gasless mode for quite some time actually i've got a spool of gasless wire in it now and that is what we're going to be using for doing this i know many people have said to me that you cannot weld uh, sheet steel with gasless i'm willing to be proven wrong on it i want to try it myself <laughs> so um i what i have it on is i have it on this lowest setting now at the moment the wire is a bit thick okay it's um 0.9 okay it's 0.9 mil wire so yeah the, the the flux core wire tends to be that bit thicker so it's um look at what what can i do i mean it's what i have i said that what i was going to do is i was going to try and do this job with what i was using so the first thing i'm going to do before i go at the uh, the wing behind me here is i'm going to actually try in uh, try it on a test piece in my bench vise and see how i get on with the settings because what i need to do is not only get the setting of the power right but also get the wire feed setting right and uh, what we're looking for is that sound of sizzling bacon as they say it's making me hungry all right, so I've got uh, the, the piece I actually cut out of the uh, the panel the first time. I've got that in the vise, got my earthen clamp on. I've got a gash cut out of it with the um, with the grinder just to uh, see how uh, see how I get on. So let's uh, let's see what happens. Oh, bloody mask is on grind. Great way of getting archive. That's all I need. All right, okay, so there's a gob of weld on it. So it's just sitting on the top, and I bet you there's no penetration whatsoever. Well, maybe, actually, hang on, might not be too bad. I'm waiting for my eyesight to return. <laughs> Let's try another little bit. You can't go too mad because what'll end up happening is you'll just yeah i'm getting penetration here you'll, you'll end up just uh, blowing a hole in it uh, or warping the warping the piece i'm gonna be honest here folks one of the biggest problems i find when i'm welding is the fact that i just can't see i can't see what the hell i'm doing I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just me, but like literally, okay, fine. Like I started in the wrong place there. Like, I mean, I've got one good one and uh, to be honest with you, if the rest of them turned out like that, then okay. But like, I don't know. Maybe I need more light. Um, let's, uh, let's try and figure out our works workspace situation. All right, I've got my trusty floodlight on the case now. So now let's see how I get on. batteries and those floodlights are useless 
All right. Um, I think this is working. Let's just try another little bit. Okay, so there's no time like the present. Let me just try and get it uh, done on the um, on the, the panel uh, that I have here. Um, the wing. It's, uh, you know, I mean, it's not going to go back onto the car anyway, so it doesn't really matter. You know, it's just, uh, this is a test piece in itself. So uh, we'll see how we get on. All right, so we're looking for a level piece. So starting there, I suppose. just not good enough <laughs> I missed completely that's what I mean I can't see what the hell I'm doing so I need to get better lighting all right let's give it another go I have a floodlight up above me now so there's something up at the setting on the welder turn down my wire speed a bit That looks like it's doing a bit more. Okay, maybe it's too too slow a wire speed. Let's try. It. I know it's not right, it doesn't even sound right. Okay, so let's try a bit more power and a bit more wire speed. Okay, I've got a hole in it now. Hey, now I think we're in business. The settings on the welder are a bit of a pain. It's like there's two switches. One that says one and two, and the other one that says min and max. So essentially there's four settings. But I don't know whether one min is lower than two max. Or one min is, sorry, one max is lower than two min. I don't know which one is higher and which one's lower. So I've got it now on one max and a wire speed of about four. So I'm just turn the wire speed up a tiny bit more. I'm gonna just try again and see how I get on. Now we're in business. Okay, that's what it should sound like. Yeah. Okay, now. All right, so we get the magnet off the back and I'm gonna use a hammer and dolly to try and knock it all together and get uh, get it leveled off. At least it's tacked in a couple of places such as it is. I'll show you now what a mess it is. So, I mean, I said from the get-go, I'm learning how to do this. This is not me showing you how to do it. I know I'm doing it wrong. I'm trying to figure it out. But this is, uh, this is the process. So, you know, I mean, look at, if you think you can tell me exactly where I'm going wrong, and look, I know, I know using, a ga uh, using argon gas is a better way of doing it. I, I, I have used argon gas to weld and I can see that it's better, but I don't have it at home and it's expensive to get the setup. I don't have the budget for it. Like, you know, spend the money on that means it, it takes away from doing something else. So yeah, anyway, look, uh, next thing to do, I'm going to try and uh, level this off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a hammer and dolly on the back of it and uh, just try and bring this flush with or this flush with this and get it uh, 
looking reasonably presentable and then once we kind of have it all tacked in place then we can start sort of trying to button it all into place. The reality is once you start getting the settings right on the welder you do start to see uh, big uh, strides forward and uh, I'd say that's uh, fair to say in this instance too so uh, let's uh, let's take a look and see how it's shaping up. So yeah obviously you know you've got a bit of kind of oxidize, oxidization and stuff like that around there because I'm not using the gas but you know it's that'll that'll brush back anyway when I get the uh, when I get the flap disc onto it and um, it should uh, it should come good so what I'm going to do now at this point in time yeah look you know I mean it's not perfect there's little little bits of wire sticking up here and there and that kind of stuff that all comes off um I'm going to try and get a seam weld going now so what I want to do in order to stop it from warping is I want to get a damp cloth and every time I weld I'm just going to put the damp cloth on it and uh, cool it down This is pure pigeon shit welding now at its finest, but have a look and see how it's looking now. You know, I've got something resembling a seam of blobs of metal there anyway. So the next thing I want to do is I want to take the flap disc to it and I want to just see how they dress up. And uh, I fully expect that there will be little gaps and voids and stuff like that in it there. But um, if it comes fairly smooth, then what I'm going to do is I, I would expect that I will have to use a bit of filler on it. So, um, yeah, I mean, look at that, that's, that's kind of understandable, especially for a novice welder like myself. Okay, so they say that if you have to use a grinder after welding, then that makes you a grinder, not a welder. Uh, yeah, well, I am definitely a grinder anyway, there's no doubt about that. But anyway, how are you going to do bodywork welding without actually having to grind back the welds? Otherwise, it's just going to look gash. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'll show you now how it's looking. So I literally just knocked the top off the weld there and, um, you know, I, I didn't go mad on the grinder, but really what you need to do is don't build up too much heat in one spot. Um, I, I really am just relaying information that's been given to me by the other people I've mentioned. Um, but yeah, basically you just move around with the grinder, don't stay in one spot and don't, uh, don't force the grinder down, just literally let it do its thing and um, bring it down. So. You know, I mean, look at. I think that's uh, that's not going anywhere. Like that's that's solid. That's in there now. You know, um, and uh, we'll have a look at the back side of it now in a second. You know what, folks? I've actually even surprised myself there. That is not that bad. I mean, it's it, yeah. By professional standards, it's crap. But by my first proper attempt at doing body work, and this really is my first attempt. You're, lo you're looking at me figuring it out. So this is actually my first attempt. That's not bad. And, uh, you know, by the time I've kind of, you know, dressed it all up, given, little, given, given it a little skim of filler, then I think I'd, uh, I'd go with that. Now, um, obviously the areas I'm gonna have to do, some of them would be a little bit more intricate than this. You know what? I'm not completely unimpressed by that. That is not that bad. Okay, it's not perfect, and it's definitely going to need a skim of filler, but, like, I mean, it's not going to need a wedge of filler now, you know? It'll just literally need a little skim, and uh, and that's it. But uh, anybody who says that you can't weld sheet metal with a um, gasless MIG welder, uh, well, there you go, you can. And uh, I just did it as a novice. You'll see videos of people doing it as professionals and stuff like that, but the thing about it is, is the fact that, like, for somebody who has never really done any sheet metal welding before, that's a. Uh, I'm pretty uh, pretty happy with that. So let's uh, let's dress it up. Let's uh, let's get a bit of filler onto that and let's see how it goes. There's 120 grit, by the way. The uh, the important thing to remember when you're doing uh, body work like this, and it, it is it is as much me telling myself as telling anybody else, you have to have patience. <laughs> I don't always have patience, that's the thing about it. Now, 
Applying filler is as much of an art, so far as I can tell, as anything else, because I very rarely get this bit right. I can feel a depression where the panel was, but it's certainly going to be a lot better. Could take a couple of applications of filler. I think maybe it's time to invest in a new tub of filler as well, because this one I think might be off. Might be past its prime. So uh, let's just give that a give that a bit of a wipe. Tell you what, there's no shortage of coats of paint on this car. Okay, the filler job isn't exactly what I'd call perfect by any stretch of the imagination. In actual fact, it's atrocious. But um, it was really just illustrative, you know, just to to show that job is basically a good one as far as the uh, as far as the welding is concerned. I'm happy enough with that now, you know, I mean, now, I suppose the thing about it is, what I could do is uh, spend a bit more time uh, with a hammer and dolly on straightening out the panel after I've welded it and just making sure that it's kind of not dep depressed as much. The thing about it is, is the fact that you can actually, when you run your hand across it, you can feel that the uh, repair patch that I've actually put in is slightly sunken down. And I'd say that's just because of the fact that I didn't spend enough time shaping it and stuff like that. It's a learning curve, it's a bit of a process, it takes a lot of practice. I respect that and I respect the fact that it does take years to actually get particularly good at body work. And this is the beginning of my journey. So, you know, don't, don't be too critical of me here, folks. You know, it's a, it, it is a case where I am actually just trying to pick it up now. But uh, definitely not a how-to video. This is uh, probably more like a how not to or more like, more like a, if I can do it, you can do it video. That's kind of what it is like. So I've figured it out. And if you guys have your welding plant sitting in the corner and you're afraid to touch it, go and uh, dig it out. Give it a shot. Get yourself some uh, old bit of rusty metal. Go down to the scrapyard or something like that. Pick up a few bits and pieces. Practice until your heart's uh, content and you're uh, happy enough to go at your actual car itself. Because, uh, you know, just even uh, the sense of satisfaction I've got out of, uh, out of doing that is uh, is immense and i'm just going to give it a little coat of high build primer and just see how it looks yeah it looks crap but that's because i didn't spend any time there uh, sanding the filler back so uh you know it's solid that's the main thing here I'm actually really happy with what I've accomplished here today, folks. So um, I'm going to leave it there. So look, thanks very much for watching and uh, joining me on my uh, my journey of uh, teaching myself a new skill. And uh, certainly I'm going to keep uh, keep going and uh, practicing a bit more and uh, trying to get myself 100% uh, on it before I kind of go at the car. Um, I'd say if cars could get nervous, the MG would be getting a bit nervous. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, look, at that's a, it's a good starting point, you know, and as I said, if I spent a bit of time just uh, uh, applying the filler properly and sanding it back and then giving it a proper coat of paint and everything like that, then, yeah, it would uh, it would probably look okay and uh, certainly be solid enough anyway, that's, uh, that's for sure. So, look, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and um, to, if you want to stay updated with the progress on the MG and my other projects, please do hit the subscribe button and this little bell notification beside the subscribe button. You can click that and you will get notif notifications when I have a new video uploaded. So cheers for watching. Chat to you soon.